we're, called we're Dinky, in the, Dinky in the Brain. In the brain. We're, we're that was definitely great. definitely going to do, I think, uh, a, feature. a feature article yeah, we got on it. that. Yeah, like because uh, I still have to take in everything. We, we <laughs> the magic were all of just that. laughing looking at this. And, um, that was perfect. Anything else you picked out? Um, yeah, no, it was. it's more of a shout out. So we ran into our friend Austin, who is one of the workers over at another comic book store, Gotham Central. Oh, and yes. Austin mm. did his big purchase, which was a lion cat statue from Dang. Saga. From Saga, yeah. And that for was 200 a, bucks? For maybe? about Pretty 200 much. bucks. Yeah, yeah, it was a beautiful statue. You don't, you don't want to know how big it was, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a nice statue, so, you know, we were all peer pressuring each other and peer pressuring <laughs> ourselves into buying some nice stuff. It's got to so. be a rainy day to go there. And what about you, Anthony? So, I was more of a browser, and <laughs> I gotta say, I did enjoy everything I saw. Yeah. And one thing that stood out for me was the Sharkosaurus. Yes. It's the story about pay intelligence versus creationists, and then the Sharkosaurus oh. comes out in the middle saying, you're both wrong. And yeah. I'm drops eat you off. Mike. Drops yeah. Mike. It's, pretty, it's pretty, pretty much if you took a shark, put him on the body of a T-Rex, but gave him the sort of movements like the movie Tremors. Oh, yes. On a, on a, it was a, a creationist golf course, was yes. it? Yes, it Yeah, was. it was a creationist golf course, and he's just viciously murdering everyone indiscriminately <laughs> on this golf course. That's it was some weird sex in man. So yeah. weird. It is so amazing, though. Weird, <laughs> but for some odd reason it worked, and yeah, they need to make this into the Sharknado spinoff. Yeah, <laughs> just well, just yeah. check it so out. shout out to Sharkosaurus and the yeah. creators because yes. that was that gave us a good laugh too. <laughs> and also shout out to Mean Girls Club. Mm-hmm. Pick mm-hmm. that up. I know Surreal picked that up. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we actually picked it up for Surreal and, and Prince, um, of yeah, Prince of Cats. Yeah, and Prince of Cats and Ryan Heshko is actually who the writer of Mean yes. Girls Club was doing signing. So we got a uh, signed autograph for Surreal. Very nice. Thank yes, you, Ryan. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, um, also, and I finally got to meet Emmanuel Chetneuf. We we. We just yes. did that whole like stepbrothers like did we just become best friends kind of moment <laughs> it was great um said hi to jason Liu and um andrew wheeler remember i called him andy i told him about it and then now he was like well i guess you could call me andy then and i'm like <laughs> oh very good i can call him andy oh, now um, he signed my book um i got valentine and the widow that he did and as good as gold so TCAF, what a TCAF. successful event. Uh, we can't wait until next year. And now from smaller publishers to probably the biggest and oldest publisher. Uh, we're shipping over to DC now. There's a lot of things that came out that we do want to brush up to. Um, Justice League No Justice Issue 1, DC Nation, came out a week before Free Comic Book Day, um, which was 50 cents Canadian. And uh, also Action Comics 1000 came two weeks before that and the trailer of death of superman which is yeah we're we're all like ah it's happening yeah dc's just on a roll right now and then looking ahead to june we have a bunch of new yes. number ones for justice league justice league dark justice league odyssey catwoman like all there's a whole bunch of stuff coming down the pipe so we're definitely going to do some feature articles across so- social media and you know if you follow us on instagram you can see our weekly yes. poll list every Wednesday morning and um, yeah so we encourage you to follow at comicsync.ca Very on cool. Instagram and Facebook so you'll Do find out, out more there and uh, so the first thing that we want to talk about is Justice League No Justice Issue 1 and Shane you know we kind of both flip through these pages yes. you're flipping on right now yeah um, so refresher. many good things happening yeah <laughs> <laughs> but honestly there's so many characters just in one book already Yeah, it is the new status quo of the DC universe. And just even to see characters like Superman and Sinestro and Lobo and Robin all fighting together, which is going to lead into their respective titles Mm -hmm. when that all shakes out. But some of the new character designs are great. And you're just wondering, how how did we get to this stage? So it, it... like the villains that they've introduced, like it's 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 something to see. Like the it, the yeah, one thing pretty. I will say is that uh, you know, big shout out to Francis Manipal, who is a local mm-hmm. boy yes, he from is. the GTA, Francis. Um, and just the use of color. Like I love yes. how DC is now kind of switching its titles to getting a lot more color on the pages, 
and just, unlike their movies and um no and uh, as well with that the panels with uh with this particular issue um i find is very very creative because they're using a lot more of a full page um kind of setting and it's not your traditional type of um of panels where you know um you're kind of seeing it in uh like a perfect ratio all the time um, it, it could be circles, it could be huge ass circles, it could be the whole page, it could be a tiny part of the page. They just did it up with this yeah. one. Yeah. I'm happy some with it. Some pages have frames, some don't, some have the yeah. traditional nine panel page, some are big splash, well there's actually a lot of splash pages in this book, but there's still a lot of text on those splash pages. Yeah. That used to be a gripe with me. So it was, it was a nice balance. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> yes. Yes. Shout, yeah. Shout out to the editorial team and you know, no justices for issues, the final issue should be wrapping up this week as this podcast airs mm -hmm. so you will um you can go and pick those up in your local comic book That's store right. or you can wait for you know the trade being released i'm guessing in a couple months from now mm -hmm. but um definitely go and take a look at it and if you did get a chance to pick up dc nation number zero um that was a precursor mm. to justice league no justice as well as giving us a couple of original stories mm -hmm. so anthony i know you got a chance to read through that i did and this incarnation of the joker Spoiler, he's in this. Um, <laughs> Spoiler, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he's in this. Um, he does things. I love this incarnation of the Joker. Uh, everything, the way he sounds. I'm reading it in Mark Hamill's voice, of course. Um, yeah, can wish, you do it? Really? I wish yeah. I could. I wish I could. Can <laughs> you do the laugh? Try to do the laugh. <laughs> laugh is the last thing I can do. I can no. try to do a little bit of voice. Try to do but the voice. He's more like... No, I have to find a page for him, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. We'll find a page. We'll do the voice. Gonna excerpt here. I know. I know. <laughs> Just a little excerpt of what the Joker is, but the way they captured his, his personality or lack thereof or everything about him, he's such a complex character, and they, they get it you, all You could roleplay the first page. <laughs> totally oh, totally, role totally, totally oh, roleplay actually, the first page here. You know what? Like, right on the Roger part there? I'll, I'll, I'll so, be Martello. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Guys, I'll be, we I'll are... I'll be Martello. We are right, ad living oh, this like completely, ad -living but this, this right, is yeah. comics thing, guys. <laughs> We're getting okay. a, a radio play <laughs> scene of the first page of DC Nation. Okay. So, what's your name? M Martello. R Roger Martello. Roger, I have two very important questions for you. First, what's brown and sticky? Uh, excuse me? I, I don't. I. A stick. Second, when does the mail arrive? I. What? <laughs> the mail, Roger. I'm waiting on a very important invitation. W why. What. The? Roger, please, this is your house, your mail. When is it coming? I, I, d I don't know. Soon, probably. Around this time. Oh, goody. Yay! <laughs> oh, my God. I know! So, yeah, that's a little bit of an intro that's, there. Okay, we, we need to start selling Shane and Anthony for, <laughs> for some voice acting I love jobs. how it's the girls trying to sell the boys off. <laughs> I know, I guess. <laughs> I'll, I'll be your agent. <laughs> sure, we can call it agent. Um, <laughs> no, um, so yeah, no. and I, I did read DC Nation as well, and I super super love that that character. Um, just like the whole, because uh, I know Jared Leto, you know, he kind of was a letdown with Suicide Squad. I think in my books, so. I don't think he was a letdown. Let down. He, let down. he the just, material. The material wasn't there. The yeah. material yes. screwed him. Yeah. I think I see enough of where he was going with that character, and yeah. I didn't. <laughs> Joker is very complex. I didn't like his version of To me, I think I like this, this version like this one. Yeah. is actually kind of marrying a couple of those elements, though. Which is super cool, which yes. Is good. yes. Which is good. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, everybody, for everybody's, like, the mainstream image right now for Joker, it's always, it's Heath Ledger kind of cemented himself in that. That bothers me. That yes. anarchist, <laughs> that anarchist Joker. And for those of us that have really read the comics and know the character, we know the Joker's much more complex than that, so I'm... I want deranged Joker, not anarchist. Joker. Deranged yeah, yeah. Joker. Genius, exactly. crazy, genius. wacky Joker yes. that has some charisma that you kind of like him. Like, yes, he he's <laughs> smooth. He's a tough one, yeah. He's smooth in this. I don't he's want a suave to... clown. Um, but you know, so this whole story right here, it's because of the fact that just a few issues ago, Catwoman and Bruce are about to get wed, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that whole scene that you guys reenacted—that's um, Joker trying to get his invitation to the wedding. Yeah. You know, and it's like, yeah. why would you, from all people, be invited to the wedding? And why he's got history he's, with you know, characters. He's like, the ultimate wedding crasher. Oh like, he's gosh. going and getting himself a legitimate right. invitation he's to crash. sleep with right. all the bridesmaids <laughs> and then but, kill them. Uh, but I, I had flashbacks to a little bit of Canadian television, like in the episode of Reboot, when yeah. it's Enzo's birthday party. 
and everyone is there, and then Megabyte shows oh. up at the end, and you think uh. it's to crash it, but then he plays this badass guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh and, and, and I'm just thinking that's that's what the Joker wants. He just he just wants to party with all his friends. <laughs> Is it what he wants? All right, he's oh. that friend we're worried about. So that I think is enough for like we yeah, don't want to run out. We 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 don't want to run out of time here because we could talk comics all day. Yeah, but true. Mm-hmm. There is a big topic that I know I wanted yes. to discuss. It's... That was my suggestion for today. Yes, yes. Which is um, DC Universe. Yes, the DC Universe streaming services. Not the, not the RP, online game. Not yes. the online game, but the new streaming service that's supposed to launch this fall, 2018. That's right. Um, and DC, a few weeks ago, announced Doom Patrol, and before that, quite a few number of shows. We know T- Teen Titans is the biggest launch for, Teen Titans. for DC <laughs> Universe, <laughs> as well as bringing back Young Justice for Season 3, which is Outsiders. I'm so excited! Outsiders. And then Swamp Thing in sometime in early 2019. So, so excited. Is so, oh yeah. Yeah. So excited. So what do you guys think of this whole endeavor with DC being like, you know, we have enough content that we can start our own is, is streaming it, service? Is it, is, it, is it DC, though, or is it Warner Brothers thinking that they need to get ahead of everyone else? Whoever the, yeah. uh, Whoever whoever's the pulling the strings. Is, whoever the yeah. brainiac is of this whole yes. thing. You know what? I'm happy that there is an avenue for this. I just hate the fact that, of course, I have to pitch something extra after Netflix. But at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, and also your pull list, you know. So it's it's really more like a budgetary thing for everybody at that point. But I think that they're bringing in a lot of people that people don't really know about. So I'm pretty happy with, with their choices and what they're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. I think yeah. this yeah. is the way to get people who don't go to the shops to buy the comic books, per se. Maybe mm. they just like watching TV, like my dad. He yeah. says he's a comic book fan. Shout out, Dad. <laughs> hey, Dad. <laughs> but he doesn't go to the shop and buy comics. He watches things on TV, Netflix. Yeah. He's like, oh, you watching Punisher? Like, yeah, it's on TV now, Dad. Like, you can look at yeah. it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, it'll get people more involved in ways that they're used to or are comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. I definitely think the one thing that streaming services offer is they're not limited to the rules of network television. Yeah. They don't, in terms of episode runs... It can vary depending on what the writers and the creators want. Um, in terms of like rating, they can do PG, they can do R rated, mm-hmm. they can do whatever they want with those characters. And from a budgetary standpoint, it definitely saves DC a lot of money in terms of having to shop it around to networks. Yeah, um, they're just doing their because thing. they just do their thing, and then they put they they you know they own the whole means of production, and they're gonna mm-hmm. put stuff out there. And for me as a viewer, I the only shows that I watch on TV are when it airs shows? are are HBO shows. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Westworld and Game of Thrones are my only exceptions where I'll watch them on Sunday night when it comes out. Yeah. But otherwise, I am a chronic binger. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows this. I'm the binge queen. Yes, you are. Um, hmm. Did all Sometimes of Jessica once, Jones twice, in one day? Three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but oh my god. Yeah, it's amazing. Actually, you should, it's like a marathon. How are you still alive? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I multitask Crazy. while I binge, but um, but yeah, basically, uh, for me, streaming is actually the way to go because I can yeah. watch things whenever I want and make it work around my schedule. So it's the future, man. Mm-hmm. Right, streaming services are the future, but that this is this is where the uh, I guess the pessimistic side of me comes through. Where it's now we're starting to see Disney have a streaming service on the horizon hbo is going to have a streaming service we already have hulu we mm-hmm. have netflix we have dc universe now yeah amazon um, prime amazon mm-hmm. prime everyone it goes on like and they all have their own exclusive content and it's starting to get to the point of why did people cut the cord in the first place when they're just gonna have to subscribe to four or five streaming services it's still cheaper than get... cable <laughs> but is it though if everyone is know, charging is everyone's charging that... th- Ten dollars, ten to twelve dollars a subscription, which is what seems to be the price point. And you subscribe to at least five things. You're paying. You're paying the same amount as you're paying for cable, just without the advertising. It's there, there. just not embedded. So they have to have um, like a comicsology version of this whole thing. Where right, we thought we thought Netflix was going to be the one native thing for everyone, but now now... it's it's because Netflix showed the world how successful that model is, Mm -hmm. and you know Netflix is still, I think going to be ahead of the the game for quite a bit 
because they have the most content and they've they've saturated the world mm-hmm. and they thrive off of their original content they own big libraries across the globe so that's why you see so much foreign shows and all this stuff that they're pushing mm-hmm. so i think netflix will still own that it's whether you know things like hot properties like disney and marvel and then you have dc on the other hand pulling in their creating their content that's what i think is going to take away a lot of people from netflix right and, mm-hmm. and if disney successfully finds a way to get a sports streaming service 